All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about propagating some pothos, one of my favorite plants. All right, guys, welcome to my second plant video on this channel. Thanks for coming back to check this out. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to turn this into this. This is a Marble Queen pothos here, and this has already been divided from a plant that was even bigger than this. I had to make two plants because it was just drinking way too much water. I couldn't keep up with the watering. And that's, that's one of the things uh, when you get to, uh, when you make a pothos really big, it uh, transpires tons of water. So you're going to have to water it a couple times a week. Usually when they're about medium size, you can get away with once a week. But uh, this twice a week, once to twice a week. Usually it's, uh, it's twice. But yeah, let's talk about how to make one of these. Okay, so you need a couple things. Clean pair of scissors, you need a jar or something to put the cuttings in and then you need uh, water and the cuttings itself. So let's get this guy out of here since this, this is an example of what it's going to look like in a few weeks or a week depending on how fast your, uh, your cuttings grow. And I'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's find a vine that we want to cut. Dead leaf there. So I'm going to just cut this, this long one. And I've found with pothos, when, when you, it doesn't always happen, but it happens most of the time. When you cut a vine up here close to the base of the plant, that stub will branch out into two vines. So it gets thicker and bigger every time you cut it. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go with this one here. And when you cut the pothos, you always wanna cut it right below a node. So where are we gonna cut this one here? How close to the plant do we want to get? You know what? I'm going to go right about here. And there we go. This is going to be the base for our new plant. Okay, so what we have here is the vine that we just cut off the pothos, the Marble Queen. And I just want to talk about uh, what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is uh, the vine. This you can call a stem or a vine. I call it the vine. This area here is the node. And the node is where the leaf comes out of. And you also have this little nubby thing here, which is called an aerial root. And, uh, and this is where the root will actually start growing from when you put this in the water. The aerial root will extend into a water root. Uh, you'll get a little sprout coming out of the node, which will lead to a leaf, which will lead to a new vine. So this, this is the important bit here. And when you, when you cut these, what you want to do is cut fairly close to the ends here. And uh, there we go. That goes into the water and that'll eventually grow into this. So you can see the little sprout coming out right there. And then the aerial root turned into a water root. And this plant right here is ready to go into soil. And eventually th this, this leaf may survive, may not survive, usually does survive. But uh, if it does die, don't worry about it because this is gonna make the new plant. It's gonna make the new vine. So there we go. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut up all of this now into little sections like, like this. And then we're gonna put it in water and uh, we're gonna wait for it to root. Okay, so now you know, knowing is half the battle. So uh, let's cut this up and a lot of stem goes to waste, but that's okay. If you have a compost, you can pop that in the compost. You just don't want too much of this extra vine hanging around, which is why you cut it so tight. At least that's the way I was taught. I don't know exactly why. I assume if you put the whole vine in, it should be fine. There are times when uh, the aerial, there's little nubs, aerial roots that aren't exactly at the node, they're a little further over one way or the other. And I'll make my cut to include those because those could grow into roots too and the more roots the plant has, the faster it grows. So that one I'm leaving a little more. I also assume that we're supposed to cut off these excess vine bits because that's just more uh, energy the plant has to put into keeping that part of the plant alive. And you want it to focus on building roots and pushing out growth instead of uh, keeping this the old vine alive, which isn't really going to do anything for the plant. That's what I'm assuming though. That's what I'm assuming. And this is interesting. Here we have, there used to be a leaf right here. Obviously it fell off somewhere. We have an aerial root 
and the node. Let's put that in water and see what happens. Maybe, I don't know if that's gonna grow into anything, but we'll see, it'll be a little experiment. Let's cut, cut. Okay, now we come to the end. And uh, I've seen people talking about just throwing the ends away, but they do grow, they do grow. I find the ends will root. It'll take a little bit longer than, than this type of cutting, but they will root. And then this little piece here, that's good, what's gonna form into the next leaf will eventually form into a leaf. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it really close to the node here. And we're just gonna put that in water. Maybe I'll cut this leaf off. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna take this leaf off. All right, so now we're just gonna pop that in the water and it should start forming roots from this node and this node, and then we'll plant it. Okay, so now that we have our 15 cuttings plus a potential 16th if it does grow, <laughs> uh, we can put these in water. So what I do is I usually leave the water out overnight, empty vodka bottle, and the roots want oxygen. I don't know if this actually makes a difference or not, but I shake up the water just to get a little Get some bubbles in there and hopefully you see the bubbles uh floating around the roots after I don't, I don't honestly i don't know if it makes a difference i just started doing that thinking it might but probably doesn't make much of a difference and the reason i leave water sitting out overnight in a bottle is uh, the chlorine evaporates if you let it sit out i don't know if uh, again there's just a little top that little hole in the top of the bottle here I don't know if that aerates the water enough or if I have to put it in a cup or something with a wider hole I haven't really uh, been taught that too much but anyway I let the water sit overnight so once you get your your water in there then you just toss your uh, your cuttings in obviously node in the water and that is that super simple super easy now it takes I would say around a month, two months to grow a, a nice looking big plant, maybe even more than that. It, uh, it depends on how fast all of these roots develop. The faster the roots develop, the faster you can move on to getting a plant, but it's not one of those things that's gonna happen overnight. So you have to be patient and just let it happen as it happens. And we'll see what happens with this one. All right, and uh, there it is. There it is, we have just started the propagation process with the pothos. All right, so here are the cuttings we just made today. And these are some cuttings I made a week ago. Well, actually, I'd say two weeks ago now. And you can see them in there. And every week you wanna change the water because it does get a little murky. Uh, you can see some of the roots starting to grow in there. That's pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna pull these out and we're gonna take a look at them so I can show you what's happening. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these. I'm do this one-handed again. So you can see here the aerial root is starting to poke through and we have a little bit of a, a growth happening as well. So this, uh, this is a few weeks away from being plantable. This one here I showed you earlier. This one's looking good. This is what you wanna look for. This is ready to go in the soil. The root is nice and long and you have a growth happening, a new vine, a new plant, I don't know what to call it, a sprout, it's not really a sprout, it's not a seed, I don't know what you would call that, if, uh, if you know, let me know in the comments, what would you call that, I just call it a growth. So the root's looking good, the growth's looking good, and we're going to plant that later so I can show you guys how to plant. And uh, here's an end piece, you can see I didn't water my plants enough and when the new leaves unfurled, they unfurled with holes in them. So that's just something to know. If, uh, if you've got a big plant like this, make sure you water it properly because uh, if it does get dry, it does produce weird leaves. So what I wanted to do was, uh, what was a little bit of rot happening there at the end? Let's feel that. Oh yeah, that's definitely some rot. We can cut that off or we can just leave it. Let's cut it off. Okay. So what happens with these end pieces is they don't actually push out a new growth. The roots will come out of the nodes and then this piece here, if you can see this piece here, will start growing. That's where the new leaf was going to come out from the plant and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. And uh, these ones usually take a little bit longer than uh, the regular cuttings. 
This one here has a good root and it's got a little growth starting to happen. Looks like I got to clean off my lens now. All right, and this one here, we have a growth starting, but uh, no root. So that's going to need some more time in the water. Put you back in there. This one, looks like nothing's going on yet. So that's going to need some more time in the water. This one's got a new growth, but no root. So that's going to need more time in water. You want to make sure there's a root at least at least a centimeter or what's it said? Two, two centimeters to an inch at least. Just to make sure that uh, when you plant it in soil, it's uh, soaking up some of the water when you water it. Now there, there is a method where you can just stick this right in the ground without uh, water propagating it first and it will grow. And I'm sure that does work. I've never tried that. So this one looks like it's got two roots and a little growth happening right there. And this one's, uh, this one's close. This one's maybe a week away. Once this long root doubles in length, I'll, uh, I'll put that in sand or soil. Sand. <laughs> All right. And last one. We have a root and no growth happening. Okay, so that's it. We have one so far. This is the quick grower and uh, let's get that in soil. All right, so here we go. Time to plant this guy here and um, got a little plastic planter. We got a little plastic uh, tray here to catch the water when we water it so we don't make a mess. And it's pretty simple stuff put some soil in there so I film it fill it almost to the top then I'll stick my finger in there try and make a little well and that's just for the root now the thing is when you put this in in sand why do I keep calling it sand when you put it in soil potting soil what you want to do is just get this node just below the surface right so this little piece can poke up through the soil if you bury it too deep it takes too much time for this to, to push through the soil. So you want to keep the soil level right about here. So poke a little hole in there, put the root in. And the root can twist up a little bit, that's fine. And I'll just fill it with some soil. Give it a little shaky shake. And now we'll just adjust everything so it's at the right height. Perfect. And now for the water. And what you want to do is with the first watering, you want to soak it all the way through so all the water drains through the bottom. You probably want to put more water than I just put here, but I'm just giving an example. Um, and what you want to do is pay attention to the water. These, these roots obviously have been propagated in water and uh, they're used to being in a wet environment. So what you don't wanna do is put them here in the, uh, the potting mix and then allow the roots to dry out because that might kill your plant. So in the beginning, I would water it maybe every other day for the first week and then every three days for the next week and then every fourth day of the week after that. And then just go to maybe once a week, once it's, uh, once it's ready, but you gotta play it by ear. These leaves will start to droop when they get dry and they need water and then stand up more erect when uh, they're full of water. And you just pay attention to those little things. But uh, yeah, in the beginning, give it more water than less water. And then as it starts to grow, just wean it off and, and go for one watering a week. And then if your plant gets really big, then you gotta go back to two or three times a week, depending on how much uh, water it needs. But that's it. That is how you propagate and plant little pothoses. And eventually you turn them into big plants like this. And uh, yeah, I'm lucky here. Look at this. This whole backside has propagated a bunch of really light colored variegation or variegated leaves. They have uh, very little green on them. That's pretty cool. And on this side that was closer to the sun, they're a lot more green. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Look at this whole section here is all really light colored leaves. And there's one here in particular that I really like. This one here, this leaf. If you can see it, it's got a lot of white and green. There's not a lot of yellow in the leaves, whereas these ones have a little more yellow. And uh, the white and green looks pretty cool. But anyway, that is that is it. Thanks for watching.
Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, propagating pothos. Mm -hmm. If you own a pothos, it doesn't matter if it's a marble queen, uh, a jade, or a neon pothos. What else is there? There's pearls and jade. There's an enjoy. There's a satin pothos. There's, so, there's a lot of varieties. This technique works for every pothos as far as I know. I haven't tried it on every pothos because I don't own every pothos. But uh, yeah, it also works with the philodendrons. So I've made a video about culling propagating philodendrons the other day and uh, philodendrons are pretty much the same as this at least the one that the what was the actual name of it i'll put it down below because not all philodendrons are the same right but the viney philodendrons i assume will all propagate the same way so that's it uh thanks for watching uh peace out i will see you guys in the next one where we talk more about plants <laughs> all right Bye for now.